Now, one piece of fish, oh, fish keeping? What am I talking about? Honestly, this is like the third take of this little bit. What is up, everyone? Hope you are all doing well. It is a fine and sunny day for me, even though it's freezing cold. I'm meant to be out cleaning my pond, and I'll be honest, it's not happening. Um, it's cold, it's just not happening, not doing it. So I've been sat here chilling with my dogs, Roma's with me, mini dogs with me this side. Um, and I've just been chilling, reading through comments, looking through the videos that I've made. You know, it's the channel's been going a year and a bit or a year or so now. So just reading through some old comments and some bits and pieces. And I realise there's a lot of comments that are like, oh my word, word I wish I had realised that beforehand. Or I wish I had thought about, I don't know, doing the pipework like that or doing the substrate like that in a bag or something. And I realised, I was like, do you know what? There's quite a few things that customers used to say when, I, when they would come into the shop and they'd set up their tank and three or four weeks later they would go, do you know what? I forgot to do this or I didn't think about doing this. And now that it's full of water, it's a pain to drain it down and sort it out. So after reading through the comments and seeing two or three people saying that exact thing pretty much, and then sat here thinking of them in my brain, I'm like, do you know what? There's probably, I don't know, 10 things that I would do before filling my fish tank up. So I thought I'd put them all in one video where it's all the things you should do or you should check before you fill your tank up with water. Now, some of these might not be a must for everyone. Some of them you might think are less important than others, but at least they're all here in this one video to stop you hopefully making mistakes and having those annoyances later on, two months down the line when there's tank full of water, fish in there and you go, do you know what? I'd have really liked to have done that because it would make my life easier now. So yeah, they don't, they're not all a must, but I think most of them will be a good thing for beginners and maybe even seasoned veterans to know. And then what I'll do is I'll pin a comment to the top with any tips that I missed. So it's, as with fish keeping, everyone's always learning. So I'll pin a comment to the top that's, um, that you guys can drop your tips in to say, you know, what you would do or what you would think of before setting up a fish tank. Anyway, before we get into chatting too much, I'm going to go through the points that I've thought of and let's see if you guys can think of any more. But I think I've got most of them. After reading your comments and thinking of what ones customers have done, and I'll be honest, which ones I've done, because I've done a lot of mistakes. I think I've got most of them. So uh, let's get into it. Let's do a video of all the things you should do before you fill your fish tank up. So the first one that I thought of, um, which I think is most people's sort of first thing you think of when you're getting a fish tank, is choosing the location. Now, if you read a lot of the old school fish keeping books and maybe even some of the websites out there, you wouldn't put a fish tank anywhere in your house. Like my house is full of windows, as in like the front and the back of my house is glass. There is no wall that is windows. So it automatically puts me in a bit of a tricky situation with trying to get a fish tank anywhere that's not bright and not lit. Actually, let me show you what I mean. I'll take you to the live bearer tank and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Sorry, Romy, you're gonna have to move so I can get up and film. No? Maybe not. Maybe I'll just stay here. No, let's go, let's go and show you. Right, so I'm not gonna be in shot for this. Sorry, you'll just have to do without my face in this, which is probably better, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, this is my live bearer tank. Ta-da! Um, it's been for a few changes recently, actually. I did have all those stem plants in the back but unfortunately they've gone a little bit mad and a little bit mental. Um, so I got rid of them, bought some really nice Amazon swords and we've gone with that now. So it should be a little bit slower growing and a little bit easier for me to maintain. Um, but this here is my window. Now, like I say, that is a floor to ceiling window. Daylight streams through there in the afternoon. It is horrendous for algae. So that's why I put a background here so that it blocks out all the light. But if I was to read the books, this would be an awful location to choose because this is also my TV. So I have to keep my TV a little bit quieter, a little bit sort of not as noisy to allow these fish to sort of chill out and not be stressed. So talking about locations, my axolotl tank, I say my, our axolotl tank, because me and Katie created this one. Uh, so this one's a little bit better because it's tucked out the way it's sort of in the middle of my room, it's tucked behind a sofa, it's not gonna get banged, knocked, it's not near any light sources really, like the window's big, but it's not gonna hit this directly. So this one's a little bit of a better location. So yeah, it's, it's a tricky one, and like I say, if you listen to a lot of things, 
you would not put your tank pretty much anywhere in your house. So I don't think it's like a perfect science, but the things you've got to bear in mind is sunlight or lots of light. If it's a bright room, you might get lots more algae. You've got to think of noise. So TVs, uh, speakers, things like that, that could freak the fish out. You've got to think of like high traffic areas. So where doors are gonna be swinging open and people are gonna be walking through. Uh, and then probably the last one is like uh, sources of heat. So fireplaces or um, like heaters or radiators. You've got to be careful of that as well because all of those things could cause problems with your fish tank. Like I say, they're not a major problem, but it's just good to bear them in mind at this first point of picking where your fish tank's gonna go. The next thing on my list of things to think about before filling your aquarium with water is the cabinet it sits on. So if you're buying something like this, like a kit, which comes with the cabinet and everything, it's obviously designed to take the weight, so it's no great issues. If you are buying an aquarium without a cabinet and you're wanting to sit it on something that's already in your home, you wanna make sure it can take the weight. Now, a lot of the time, um, we probably weigh more than most of the aquariums, maybe. Um, I certainly weigh more than a lot of the aquariums, not this one but smaller ones, I weigh a lot more on them. So if I think I could sit on it or I could push my weight onto something, then I'm fairly sure it's gonna take it. You can always test it out with like bags of sand. Every liter of water is a kilo. So if you've got a 60 liter aquarium, you've got 60 kilos of water there. Give or take rocks, sand, it's gonna displace the water, but you're obviously gonna have heavy rocks and sands in there. So swings and roundabouts. But yeah, you do have to bear it in mind. I've seen a lot of sketchy builds where people have put them on like, coffee tables, but like those really cheap flimsy coffee tables and they start to wobble about and yeah, you do not want that amount of water over your floor. So yeah, always check what you're gonna use is suitable for its purpose because cabinets could be the downfall of your aquarium, literally. One thing to bear in mind actually that I've just thought about, a bit of an add-on to that, is check with the company you're buying from what their guarantee is. So some aquarium companies only guarantee their aquariums if they're sat on a legit aquarium cabinet from them. Like, I don't know what companies, I don't read instructions, but I know that there used to be a big thing of like, if it wasn't sat on their cabinet, they would not guarantee the tank at all. So if it, it did ever split, and I've sold thousands of aquariums and like I've known a handful to split, you might be in a bit of a sticky situation because they will not honour the guarantee. That might mean your house insurance doesn't honour the guarantee and then you could be in trouble. So always check how the tanks are meant to sit in the instruction manual um, or just, you know, risk it and go with it. Like I say, I've sold thousands and thousands of aquariums and I've known probably a handful to break. And most of the time people are like, I don't know what happened and they bring it in and there's a big impact crater on the bottom where they blatantly dropped a rock. It is one of those things, most of the time it's down to user error rather than the tank just exploding for no reason. If you stick to the big brands, your Fluvals, your Oase, your Aqua One, your, I don't know who else, Eheim, you very rarely hear about them having a problem to be honest. But yeah, just check the warranty and the guarantee on a, on a fish tank because you might be surprised to learn that they won't honor it if you haven't got a proper cabinet. Last little thing about cabinets, and I'm gonna move on to something a little bit more interesting, possibly, probably not more interesting, but it will save you from annoyance later on, I promise. The cabinet, make sure you clean the top of it. The amount of times that you leave a little bit of sand or a screw or something on the top of the cabinet, and then you sit the tank down and you hear this crunchy, cracky noise. Luckily, most of the time, the tank's heavy enough to crush said piece of gravel or sand but in the event that it's a screw or something you've left over from DIY and building the cabinet, that could go badly. So always wipe down the top of the cabinet before you put the tank down because yeah, that doesn't end well for anyone. Now next on the list is a simple but annoying one that I read someone's comment on one of the videos, I think it was the XL cube because that's got a background on it, is putting a background on an aquarium before you fill it with water. Now it wasn't so bad on that one because that's a 3D background that goes inside the aquarium, but if you are painting the background of the aquarium or you're putting on one of those like pieces of paper, like a sheet sort of thing, that is gonna be a problem once it's full of water. It is gonna be a nightmare. Obviously this aquarium I opted for no background, so it's just got the like brickwork behind it so you can sort of see through. It gives it that orangey look, that sort of, yeah, tanned water look that I wanted, so it works quite well for me. 
But yeah, definitely, if you're going to put a background on, do it while the tank is away from the wall and with no water on it, because it's just so much easier. Now, next is another simple one, probably a little bit harder to rectify if it is wrong, but it's making sure the aquarium is level. Now, the reason I've come over to this tank is Awaze do this really clever thing. They've got these little Allen key bolts that you can get access through the bottom of the cabinet, um, and then you can actually adjust the tank on the floor as you're sat there. So it is a little bit easier. Most of the other companies do have something like that. Some of them are trickier to get to. Um, some of them actually don't have them at all, but it's fairly easy to rectify unless you've got a horrendous house that's sort of all over the place. It's not too bad. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be spot on perfect. Just as close as you can get it. As long as it's vaguely level, end to end, front to back, you'll be absolutely fine. The other thing when leveling your aquarium is you wanna check if your tank needs to sit on polystyrene or like a foam pad, or if, it need, if it's got a floating base to it. Now some aquariums have this like plastic trim that means the glass floats, um, sort of, not floats, but sits on the plastic means you don't have to have anything sat underneath it. If you've got a flat bottomed tank and it's literally glass on cabinet, most of the companies will recommend you put something underneath it, like a bit of foam or a little bit of polystyrene. Again, just check the instructions or check the manufacturer and what they recommend doing to the tank that you have got. Um, yeah, it varies from tank to tank. There is no rule, but if it's got a plastic trim around the bottom, it's probably got a floating base. If it hasn't, you're probably gonna want something to, for it to sit on. Next on the list of things to do before you fill your aquarium, do you want to plant your tank with real plants or with plastic? It's a personal preference. I have no problems with people who want plastic plants. I understand it. It's a easier option in some respects. It means you need to do more water changes to dilute the fish poo, but I can understand where people are coming from. Like sometimes these tanks do get a bit much maintaining them with real plants, but anyway, do you want plants or not? If you want plants, you're gonna to wanna to look at a planting substrate. So something soil-based to go into the bottom of the aquarium so that then the plants have something decent to root into. It's probably the one of the most common things is that people forget plant substrate. This tank has plant substrate in behind these rocks and the plants do so, so well. But once you've got a tank filled, yes, you can do it. It is hard though, and you will probably turn your tank into some brown murky swamp for quite some time. So yeah, definitely, if you think you're gonna have any plants at all, do it straight away, put some plant substrate in there, you will not regret it. Again, before filling your aquarium up, don't wash your plant substrate, but do wash sands, gravels, rocks, yeah, anything like that. Anything that might harbor a little bit of dust. Shipwrecks, wash them as well. Um, but yeah, anything that might harbor a little bit of dust, you are best off washing it. You will have seen in some of my videos, I do not wash them. I've been doing it for 15, 20 years. I know how long it will take for the filters and for me water changing it to take that dust out of the aquarium. For a new person or for someone who's wanting to get things moving a little bit quicker and yeah, wanting to make their lives easier, personally, I would give everything a rinse through, whether it is, like I say, sand, gravel, rocks, I would wash it all through because it's just gonna make your life easier in the long run. Now, one piece of hardscape that I didn't mention in the last little video, not video, this is the video, I mean, uh, clip, that's what I mean. So, one bit of hardscape, oh my word, wake up. The one bit of hardscape that I haven't mentioned is wood. Obviously, I quite like bogwood and driftwood and spiderwood and all the different types of wood. I love using it in the aquarium. Now, I don't mind the tannins that get released. I like that sort of yellowy, orangey look for the aquariums. I think it looks quite natural. I think it looks quite cool. Some people will hate it. So really, there's two ways to combat this. It's soaking the wood for quite a while before you putting it in um, and just making sure a lot of those tannins are released. Again, giving it a quick rinse off will be okay, um, but you are gonna get some sort of tannin release from that. There are ways of battling it. So things like carbons will, you can put them into your filters and they will absorb the tannins out of your water, but it's not an easy thing. So if you want that crystal clear water or as close to it as you can at the start, then yeah, don't put any wood in there before washing it. Um, some people will boil it as well. Boiling it supposedly opens up the pores of the wood a little bit more and releases the tannins quicker. I've never done it, I don't think. I don't think I've ever boiled wood. I just always soak it for a week or two beforehand. Um, or if I'm not bothered, I just chuck it in. But yeah, I would say if you're looking for an easy life, soak your bog wood first, 
just to make sure you've got that cleaner, easier start to your tank. Now lastly, it's all your equipment. So it's pipes, plugs, wires, uh, whatever you've got that's gonna be running down the back of your aquarium, you wanna make sure that you have put them down beforehand. If you fill your aquarium up and then you've gotta try and get a plug down, and it's just, a, it's a nightmare job. Normally someone's in the cupboard for me, so normally like I'm in the cupboard and Katie's trying to drop the plug down the back of the tank to me. Yeah, I would say honestly, I would try and do all of that before you fill up the aquarium. Now, inevitably, sometimes stuff goes wrong, stuff breaks, it happens. Or you have to maintain it, to be fair, you have to pull your piping out to maintain it. Now, in the eventuality of this, you wanna make sure your aquarium is far enough away from the wall that your plug will come out. The amount of times that I have done it where I've sort of started to plumb everything in and plug everything in, and I realize I've pushed the tank and cabinet too far back towards the wall, and the plug now doesn't fit behind the cabinet. Um, so yeah, always make sure your cabinet is away from the wall a little bit, and try and do the majority of your equipment, plugs, heaters, lights, all of that stuff, try and do it before you fill up the aquarium. It makes life, again, hopefully this little tip, makes life so much easier for you. Now, I know I said lastly, that was the last point, it's not planting. This is a bit of a thing of some people, it depends what you wanna do. Some people will plant wet, some people will plant dry. Personally, for me, I like planting when it's either half full or full. I don't mind getting my arms wet, and I prefer the way, I, ca I can see what the plants are gonna look like. When you plant dry, they sort of fall over and they droop over and you can never get a feel for maybe some gaps that you've missed or something like that. So I prefer to plant when the tank is full of water. But sometimes it is easier to do the majority of your planting when the tank is either drained or dry or some people will spray down the sand or gravel so that it's damp and it holds the roots in. It's a personal preference thing. Like I say, my one is to plant when it's full and fully wet and yeah, full of water. Other people might do it dry. Roma, get out the way. Let me sit down. Right, move up. Ah. Ah. Now, hopefully that's been useful for you. Um, I think that's most points I can do. Are you finished? She's grumbling at me because I've squished her up to the corner. Um, yeah, hopefully it's been good, hopefully it's been interesting, hopefully it's been useful and it will stop you from making a few of those simple mistakes that new people make and seasoned veterans. The amount of times that I've done it where you two, honestly, right, I started again. Um, so yeah, the amount of times that I have done it where I've not put a plug in properly or I've not done something is unreal to be honest. But hey. I can go back and watch this video now and make sure that I don't miss any of those things. As I said at the start, let me know in the comments of anything that I might have missed. Um, that's most of the ones that I commonly come across, but I'm sure there's many others that people forget about or don't do when building and starting their first or maybe their seventh or 10th or 11th aquarium. Anyway, I'm going to chill back out here. I'm going to sit down with the dogs and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, I've got to get off. I've got to get up and turn the camera off now. Are you tired? All right. See you in the next one.